This is Grade 2, Module 4, Lesson 30, and we are going to be comparing two methods for addition. One, uh, Engage New York is calling the Totals Below method. That's not an official name, by the way. And the other method, they're calling the New Groups Below method. Um, that's also not an official name, um, so you don't have to really memorize those um, have your students memorize them. You as a teacher might want to know what these are. And basically, I think of totals below as partial sums. And, and partial sums. And I think of the new groups below method as the standard algorithm. Standard algorithm. And I'm just going to put ALG. Um, and so the idea is, the purpose of this lesson is to just give students another way of thinking about addition. Because the whole idea of Common Core is we want to teach students for understanding. We don't want to just give them a bunch of rules to memorize. And that's where this lesson is coming from. Don't freak out too much if your students struggle with this alternate alg algorithm, the partial sums method. It's, but it's worth sharing with them. And here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you first the standard algorithm over here on the right. So we've got 8 plus 4 is 12. So that means we're going to write a 2, and we're going to bundle 10 of those together and into the tens column. And then we have 5 tens plus 6 tens plus 1 ten, so that gives us 12 tens. So that means we have enough to bundle 10 of those together to get uh, 100, and we're going to have 2 left over. And then we're going to have uh, 100 plus 100, that gives us 200. So our answer is 222, kind of an interesting number. In contrast, the partial sums method, or the totals below method, doesn't require um, regrouping or bundling at all. Uh, what they do is they have 8 plus 4 is 12, so we're going to record 12. And then uh, 5 tens plus 6 tens is 11 tens, so that's 110. So we're going to record that as 110. And then lastly, 100 plus nothing gives us 100. So there is the adding like units, or totals below method. And now we add those together. So we have 2 plus nothing plus nothing gives us 2. And then 110 plus 110 plus nothing gives us 2 tens. And then 100 plus nothing plus uh, nothing plus 100 plus 100 gives us 200. So our answer is 222. And not a shocker, we get the exact same answer. <clears throat> so the idea is um, this is also called adding like units. So you're adding the ones, you write the values down. And then you're adding the tens, and you write the sum down. And then lastly, you're adding the hundreds and you're adding the, uh, writing that sum down. So they're calling this totals below method, some people call it partial sums method. The idea is we're going to try and teach students uh, for understanding, make sure they understand how to add. So the directions for this problem was to give students a, a, an opportunity to solve this problem in more than one way. So as a teacher, uh, give your students plenty of choice and le just let them go. I know, uh, I've seen second graders solve this problem in six or seven different ways in a nice class period. So just let them go. Let them explore. Let them figure it out. It's really awesome. I'm going to show a couple of ideas. Uh, let's do the totals below method. So 8 and 4 is 12. 30 plus 40 is 70. I did a little shortcut there, right? I called that a 30 plus 40 instead of 3 tens plus 4 tens. And then 100 plus nothing is 100. And now we add, and we get 182. So that's one way we could do that. And now let's see if I can shrink that. No, I'm not going to be allowed to shrink it. Okay, another way we could do it is uh, we could do 134 plus 48, and we could do it more of the standard way. So let's see, we've got 4 plus 8 is 12, so that's going to be 2 carry the 1, or bundle 10 of those together into the tens column. 
3 plus 4 plus 1, that's 8, so that's 80. So we're going to put an 8 in the tens column. And then we have 100 plus nothing gives us 100, so our answer is 182. So, so far, we're doing all right. Now, um, man, I've seen students use uh, number bonds here. Here's another way, or partial, like a decomposition. For example, I've seen students take 134, and they know they need six more to equal the next decade. So we're going to break this up to 6 plus 42, and then... 134 plus 6 is 140, plus 42 gives us 182, all right? There's a lot of ways that students can use to solve this problem, and just let the students go to town. Oh, hey, I'm going to do another famous one, another famous one that they, they do a lot, 134 plus 48. So 134 plus 48. We do just decomposition. So we've got 100 plus 30 plus 4, and we've got 40 plus 8. <clears throat> so I've seen students do this. They do 100 plus 30 is 130, plus 40 is 170. So they take these three together, make it 170, and then they take 4 and 8, add those together to get 12, and now 170 plus 12 is 182. I've seen second graders do that. So the idea of this problem is just to give students free reign to use their number sense to add this problem in as many different ways as they can and have a great classroom conversation about it. So the idea of this, I think, if I can get into the head of the authors, is down here they're going to ask us <clears throat> to... So, uh, ask us to explain how the two ways that we solve this problem are similar. Well, teachers, it's possible that these second graders may come up with a, a second way to solve this problem that really it's hard to see the similarity between the one method they gave us and the method that the second graders come up with. So this explanation down here, uh, don't lose sleep if your students have a hard time explaining how the two methods are similar, just in a second grade appropriate way, give them, give them a chance to explain how their two methods are similar. Uh, now I'm going to play the game of Engage New York because I think what they want is they want us to use the totals below method because we can see that this is the official algorithm. It's the regrouping method. So, 145 plus 67, if I add my 1s together, I get 12. If I add my 10s together, I get 100. And if, my, if I add my 100s together, I get another 100. And I'm kind of shortchanging that, teachers, so if you need to pause and rewind and figure out what I did to get that, please do so. And then I'm going to add the columns. So I've got 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. And then I've got 10 plus 0 plus 0 is 10. So I got 110. And then I've got 100 plus 100 gives us 200. And so, of course, we get the exact same answer. So how are the kids going to explain this? Well, they might say, um, oh, well, they're the similar because they get the exact same answer. Or... They're, they might explain that, well, here's 5 plus 7, we wrote 12. Here's 5 plus 7, and we wrote 12, but we wrote it in a funny way. We wrote the 2 here, and then we regrouped or bundled an extra 1 up here, and I'm going to zoom in. This one right here is our 12 when we added the 5 and the 7. So students, it's really, it's going to be interesting to see what the students say in, in an effort to explain how these two problems are similar. Uh, but enjoy the conversation. It'll, it'll be worth it. And the last problem for this slide, they just say solve this problem in a second way. Um, let the kids have fun. I'm going to just get crazy here. I'm going to do 142 plus 39. And I see that 
this guy needs one more so in, in order to reach the next decade. So I'm going to decompose this to be 141 plus 1. So now I get 40 plus 141, so 141 plus 40, 181. And look at that. That's exactly the same answer I got. Uh, so just let students have fun with this problem. Have them solve it in as many different ways as they can because really we want math to be fun and engaging and inherently mathematics is a creative activity and this is one of those prime opportunities for students to be creative. And that is Grade 2, Module 4, Lesson 30. Uh, in particular, we're comparing two methods of addition, but really, this was an opportunity for students to get creative.